Alrighty dudes, it is now time to finally move uh, the, my baby Marlboro car catfish into the pool pond. You know, it's been a while now since he has been in like tanks and stuff like that. And he's finally ready to go actually in the pool pond now that we have the turtles out of here. Now I did put a few clips at the end of my last video saying that uh, a different video would be the next video, which would be this video. But, had to change the plans, not really done with that video just yet. But it is going to be a pretty cool uh, fishing challenge video. So that will be the next video. But for now, we are going to be moving the Baby Marlboro Car Catfish, which I already have acclimating right here, into this 300-gallon pool pond today. Jonathan Ricketts got the fish picture in the last video correct. Just shout out to him. This is the fish picture for this video. Be the first one to comment down below the correct name of that fish. If your comment's pinned, then you get a shout out in the next video. So I actually just got him out of a 56-gallon tank. And I uh, got him in this bag right here. Now, really, these water temperatures are about the same. They're both around 78, 80 degrees. So I'm not going to acclimate here for that long. I probably am going to take some of that water and just pour a little bit in there. Just kind of acclimate him to, like, the pH and all that. And then go ahead and get him right on in there. But, uh, yeah, there he is. He's definitely grown some since I've gotten him. Not, He's not grown, like, a lot, lot like he could have if I had him in a bigger tank. Of course, I had him in a 10-gallon for a little while just because I, I just had to have him in there. And then we recently moved him into the 56-gallon tank. And uh, now he is going into uh, the pond he's going to be in for at least quite some time. So I'm going to let that guy finish acclimating. And here's the fire belly tow tank today, actually, right after getting done putting the Marlboro Car Catfish in the pool pond. And I'm going to go and get, like, some soil and stuff to put right up there. Also going to get the UVB lamp today as well. And this weekend, I'll probably go and get the two fire belly toads for this. But uh, other than that, it looks doesn't look that bad. Also, this tank right here, uh, pretty soon I am going to be getting... The baby soft shell turtles for this now also if you guys watched my last video and you saw that when i went to the pet store they actually had three baby bowfin there someone that actually caught them brought them to there they were a little bit nipped up because of the person actually put them in a tank with like some bigger cichlids and stuff like that so all three of them their tails were all nipped up but uh they, they looked pretty healthy besides that and i could tell they were probably going to heal up so I'm going to go back this weekend, and if they are healed up, or at least if one of them is fully healed up, or not fully, but you know, almost, then I'm going to go ahead and get one. I'm probably going to have him in this tank right here. Once he outgrows this, he'll then go into that. And uh, actually, you see how this is really shallow water? Well, the place the person actually caught those baby boat fin out of was very shallow water. And there are some creek chubs in here, that big one back there in the back, and there's some smaller ones. Now, could he eat the creek chubs? Yeah, definitely, but probably not the big one, but... I wouldn't really mind if he did just because I just caught these guys out of a creek and I would they're really supposed to be feeder fish in the first place. And once I get the soft shells in here, they might end up eating them as well. So the saltwater tank is looking great and there's the Royal Grama. Now something that you guys did not even see because it happened so quickly and I was not filming during the time that it happened was that this Royal Grama actually had marine ick for about two days and then it just went away. Now marine ink is uh, very common just like freshwater ink is. Works in the same patterns, you come out there one day, there's a few dots come out there the next day, there's even more, and there's more each day. It works just, it works the same way, freshwater and saltwater. So the Royal Grama did have ick, but he was being, he was totally fine. He was not like mouthing at the water or anything like that for air. He wasn't holding his fins close together to his body, he was eating totally fine. I first noticed it Saturday, and then I saw more and more on Sunday, and then I saw more on Monday morning, and I got, I was actually gone most of that day on Monday. I got home late at night, checked it around about 9 o'clock that night, and nearly all of the white spots were gone on the Royal Grama. And he is just doing totally fine. You can see there is no white spots whatsoever on him now. By the way, the clownfish were totally fine. I didn't notice any on them at any point in time. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of tell you guys that. But someone did want me to actually like uh, explain how to set up a saltwater tank. Well, if you don't know, that was actually my first saltwater tank. I set it up about six months ago. Other than that, I've always been freshwater. But I gotta say, saltwater is not as hard as people make it sound like. Really, salt water is what, like, once you get the tank going, it's actually a lot easier to keep up than a freshwater tank is. It really is. However, getting it set up and all that, that is where uh, it is a little more difficult than freshwater. And it also costs a lot more, typically, depending on what size tank you get and what you're actually getting. So the first thing you obviously have to get is a tank. Now, a good starter tank, I've talked about this before, something like a BioCube, a NanoCube, something... Something that is an all-in-one type filter. You don't want to get something like a 10-gallon, you know, regular freshwater tank, have a hang-on-the-back filter, especially if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner in saltwater, getting your first ever saltwater tank, just go ahead and get something like a 14-gallon a to anywhere from like a 28-gallon bio cube, 
which mine is a 28 gallon. Once you have your tank, you'll then of course have to get your sand and your live rock. Now you don't have to get live rock. The rock that I have in my tank is actually dry rock. I did buy it all in three separate pieces and uh, of course now it is live rock though. Depending on what kind of rock you want, uh, you want something that is really going to fill out the tank kind of like that. I could have more rock in here, I really could. Now I will say it is best to go ahead and just buy your salt water if you're like a beginner. It's not I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend making your salt water, especially if you're just getting into it. Most stores have it about a dollar a gallon. It is already made up salt water. You just get however much you need for your tank. Once you have your tank, your sand, your rock, and your water, you're basically good to go. Just plug that thing all right on up, especially if it's just an all-in-one uh, tank, you know. And you're good to go. You want to let it cycle for at least a month. Now, I let mine cycle for a good three months before I got anything for it. I'm talking about like anything, like crab snails, anything like that. Of course, first you do want to kind of get like a cleanup crew, so like some hermit crabs, some snails, stuff like that. And then go ahead and get into your fish maybe a few weeks later. So the way this filtration system actually works is it overflows into this compartment right here. You got the heater right there, it then overflows into that compartment, kind of filters out through that sponge right there, then flows through some bio balls, and then overflows right through there, where it is then pumped back out into the tank, and you can see it pushing water back into the tank right over there. Now of course everything I have in my tank is very easy stuff to keep. I've got two frostbite clownfish, a royal grama, a cleaner shrimp, some snails, and a few hermit crabs. Now other than that, uh, I'm pretty pleased with my tank. Now I'm probably going to start getting into maybe a few corals, but nothing like really high dollar and really hard to keep. If you want like more in-depth information or more like step-by-step -step stuff, go over to Peewell's Reef channel. I'll have her channel linked down below in the description because her channel is more about salt water than mine. I'm going to come back at the end of the video and feed these guys right here, but right now I'm actually going to go and put the Marlboro Car Catfish into his new tank. Alrighty, here he is right here in the bag, and here this guy is into his new pool pond. There you go, buddy. And he's off. He's going to go right up under the driftwood, I bet. That's probably going to be where he stays. If not there, definitely back there in the cave, but uh, there he is right there. Look at him. He's trying to find a place to hide. There he goes. He looks so small in here. He isn't that big at all. He's only about three or four inches, but... Yep, he's looking for a little place to hide, but he'll eventually find like a little spot up in there or back there. Oh, he's going back there. Oh, he found a little spot back up in there. So that guy kind of found a hiding spot. I'm going to let him kind of settle into his new pond now. And I'll give you guys an update on him in the next video. Look at these guys right here. Look at him, he doesn't see me. Oh, look, oh my gosh, he's about to bite him. Oh, I thought he was for a second. Oh, he sees me now. Here he comes. Look at him, he wants me to feed him. Here's the tiny little pea puffer back there in his tank. This tank is really starting to grow some algae now. So I gotta get some type of cleaner fish for this. Probably just get like one or two odosynclases, maybe some snails. If I do get snails, they're gonna have to be pretty big snails, because obviously small snails, uh, that little dude back there will eat. And it'll probably be this tank that I actually get one or two odosynclases for to clean the algae. Here's one of the neons right there, and there's the other two, and the baby beta's in here somewhere. I just saw her a few minutes ago. Oh, yep, there she is. Here she comes out into the front. She is just doing absolutely great in this tank. And we, of course, cannot forget about Chungas. I already fed him this morning. I would go and feed him right now, but I already fed him a good amount of pellets this morning. So, yeah, he is doing great in his tank. So, I do have some unthawed mice shrimp right here. I'm going to go and feed these guys. Look at the clownfish already up here bobbing at the top. All right. Look at him go. There they go. Oh, oh, look at him get on. That is just crazy. Shrimp's coming out right there. All right, we're gonna give him some more. And just look at him go. And I'm never worried about anything going uneaten in here just because of the shrimp and of course the hermit crabs. And then once I'm fitting all the fish that actually eat the mice shrimp, I then come over here to the tetra tank and dump the rest of them in. And these guys are already swarming because they know it's feeding time. Look at them. That is wild. And there's one of the electric blue jack Dempsey's right there. Oh, and there's another one. And all that will be gone in just about two minutes. And uh, well, it's really basically all gone now. So of course that is really not enough for these fish. So then what I've actually started doing is feeding them some of these pellets right here, the extra small type. I actually got this sample pack at Aqua Shell. I actually got two other sizes and uh, it's great food. It really is. So I'll just drop that right on in and watch these guys go. Look at them. Just slowly drop it all in. And they just absolutely love these pellets. Just look at them go. Just swarming at the top. That is wild. And uh, all those mice shrimp and even those little tiny pellets 
are all going just like that. And of course, there are two albino plecos in here. That's the bigger one right there. And that spiny eel right back there. They kind of get the stuff that gets on the bottom. Oh, and also the little glow rainbow shark right over there. So even though there is some food that gets down to the bottom to the plecos and like the eel and the rainbow shark and all that, it really is not enough for them all. So then what I do is I'll drop a few of these little veggie pellets in. And, of course, other fish will get them as well, though. But as you can tell, that tank can definitely really pig out because of all the fish that are in here. Well, that is pretty much it for now. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We finally got the baby Marlboro car catfish moved into the pool pond. Of course, I am going to be getting some more exotics for it, like some albino Oscars, maybe a peacock bass, maybe like a small gar or something like that. But I do know I am going to add more stuff to it. But anyways, guys, with that being said, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.